Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be building a chatbot powered by OpenAI APIs from scratch. We'll be using Streamlit to build this chatbot. So we'll first learn a little bit about Streamlit, the elements that it offers, and then we'll go on to implement this chatbot. And all of this will be done and dusted in about 10 minutes. So stick with me. So open up your favorite IDE and follow along with me. We first start by creating a new Python file. And creating an app with Streamlit is super easy. So I'm just going to store this file as chatbot.py. I'm going to import Streamlit as st. And I'm going to write st.title and give, it, give this app a title. So this is what will be shown on this um, app when I open it up. So let's store this. Let's go to a terminal and run this code. To run Streamlit, we need, first need to install it. So we do pip install Streamlit. This will install Streamlit in your environment. And then you can do Streamlit run file name.py. So for me, it's chatbot.py. Once I run this, you see this local URL. You can open this up in your browser by control clicking it. Um, let me pull that up. And as you see, we have that title in the app and the app is up and running. So before we continue with our chatbot, let's go to what Streamlit is. Streamlit is an open source Python framework for building web apps easily. It requires minimal code as we just saw, and you don't need a lot of front end experience to build an app from scratch. It updates in real time as we'll see as we go along. So whatever changes you make in the code, it's instantly reflected in the app. And it has interactive widgets for user engagement. Now let's look at the specific widgets it has for chatbots. The first chat element is a chat message. So now let's go back to our code and see how chat message works. I'm going to start by creating a user chat message by typing st.chatmessage. The role that we pass or the name that we pass is user. And Streamlit uses this with syntax. So you write with st.chatmessage. And in there, I write the actual content of the message. Similarly, we can write an assistant message in this way. Let's go ahead and save this. Go back to our chatbot, refresh this, and see the changes. So as we can see, there's a user message with that user icon, and then there's an assistant message with a robot icon. But let's move on to our second element, which is chat input, the place where you put in your message or the prompt and hit send. That's what this element gives us. So let's go ahead and see it in action. Whatever input the user gives, we need to store it. So we say prompt equal to st.chat input. And then we pass in a placeholder that will be visible until the user types in something in the chat input. Now, if user types in something and it's sent, we're just going to write it out into our UI. So we're going to say st.write and the user prompt like so. Going back, refreshing the page, we see this chat input element at the bottom. Let's type in something here. Say hello, testing prompt. I send this, and as we have just typed it out, we can see it here. Now that we have seen how these chat elements work, let's go ahead and build our chatbot. Is that to build a chatbot, we need to store the messages between the user and the assistant in some sort of a list. If you observe the chat message element, we need two things for a message. We need the role, which is either a user or an assistant, and then the actual content of the message. So we'll store these messages as a list of dictionaries with each entry having a role and a content. Streamlit provides us with a very handy feature to persist these messages. It's called the session state. So on the first load, the state obviously does not have a messages variable. So we'll check for that. And if that's the case, we'll initialize the messages in the session state to an empty list. On the subsequent loads, what we want to do is we want to display a chat message element for each message in the messages list. We'll use the role field that we stored to decide whether it's a user chat message or an assistant chat message. 
and then inside we'll just have the content. Now let's get rid of these example chat messages that we wrote and continue with our prompt. We can use the same prompt example that we used, but now instead of just writing it, we'll create a chat message out of the prompt. So we'll replace this st.write with an st.chat message with a user role and the content will be the prompt. Once we have this user message, we want to store it in our messages list. So we'll append this in the dictionary format that we discussed previously. So this one will have the role user and the content would be the prompt. Before we go on and implement the OpenAI API, let's just start with a simple chatbot which simply echoes the user's prompt. Create this chat message element, this time with an assistant role, and we are going to write down the response here. Lastly, we'll append this assistant message to our list of messages. And we are done. So let's go back to our chatbot and try if this works with some examples. Yep, it does. We have the chatbot echoing exactly what we say. So now that we see that our echo chatbot is working, let's actually go ahead and add the OpenAI API. We start with creating a new folder called .streamlit, um, and we'll create a file called secrets.toml. This is going to be the file in which we'll store our OpenAI API key. There's a link down here in the description that will take you to the OpenAI website where you can get this key. You'll place this key right here. Now let's go back to our chatbot. We'll import the OpenAI module, and then we'll create a client in which we'll pass our API key. When the API key is stored in the .streamlit folder, we can directly access it like so. So before we go on, let's look at how the OpenAI API request looks. We need to pass in a model name and a messages which has a similar format to what we are already storing. And the API itself is called chat.completions.create. Let's go ahead and look at the response. We are going to get the response in this format here, a JSON structure. And we can see that the actual response is stored in this completion.choices0.message.content. So let's go ahead and call this API, get the response and access this content. We need to replace our response with this API call that we just saw. So we're going to say client.chat.completions.create. And then as we saw, we need to pass in two parameters. One is the model. I'm going to use GPT 3.5 Turbo, but feel free to use any other model and experiment. And then I'm just gonna pass in the messages as it is. Now again, this response that we get is the whole JSON object. We need to access choices zero dot message dot content to get the actual text response. Let's do that and we are good to go. And before we see the chatbot live in action, if you enjoyed the video so far, please like the video and consider subscribing to this channel. And here's our chatbot. We refresh it and let's say hi. This time we get a different answer. It's not just the echo. Let's ask a question and let's see if this goes to OpenAI API and gets us the answer. So I'm going to ask, are you chat GPT? And as we can see, yes, it's a version of OpenAI's GPT-3 technology. Yeah, that makes sense. So I asked, tell me about New York. And as you can see, we get this answer. So now we're hitting the OpenAI APIs, which is going to GPT 3.5 and fetching us these answers. And there you have it, a chatbot powered by OpenAI APIs that fetch responses from any GPT model that you want. And of course you can replace this with any other API law. So, so if you want to use, let's say Gemini or cloud or whatever, you can just replace this response and this chatbot is compatible with any API. Let's move on to our bonus section. OpenAI APIs let us do something that is much powerful, especially when it comes to chatbots. It's called streaming. Streaming sends data incrementally for faster real-time interaction. This enhances our user experience and leads to efficient handling of large responses. We can enable streaming by setting a parameter stream to true in the API calls. 
So let's see why streaming is useful and how we can implement it in our chatbot. I'll start by asking a question that is a little more involved. And as you can see, it takes a little while for the API to go and fetch this response. And we just have to wait there till that time. Now, if we change this response to a streaming response, the answer will be streamed in real time. So let's move this response inside the chat message. We'll call it stream. We'll set the stream parameter to true. And now that it's a stream, we no longer need to access it by choices zero message content. We can remove that part. And instead of writing it as a markdown, Streamlet has this element called write stream. So we'll use that to write the stream. So, so with these two simple changes, we have enabled streaming in our chatbot. Let's go back to our chatbot and see it in action. So I will ask the same question again. And now instead of waiting for the whole answer, you see that the answer is incrementally sent and loaded on the UI. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section and I'll see you in the next video.